That's gonna be just fine. Hello friends, my name is Brandon Dayton, I'm your humble narrator. Welcome back to Pokemon Gen 7 Random Battles. I have a Chandelure out against his Rotom, unfortunately. I missed the Fire Blast right off the bat. I think he's gonna Bolt Switch out here, yep. A good move indeed, although I don't know if he would've lived through the Fire Blast. Probably, Rotom Frost is pretty bulky. He's got a camera up in his lineup, so he sends it out now. I'm kind of scared of those Earth moves, so I pull it out of there and go into my Therian Thunderous, which is uh, probably a pretty good move because he does go for the Earth power. And I am immune since I'm electric and flying. I'm going to go ahead and set up the Nasty Plot now and uh, see what I can do as far as sweeping the shit out of his team. That Fire Blast really fucking hurts. I guess this isn't a Mega Evolving Camera Up. Camera Up does have a, a Mega Evolution form. But, uh, if he was that one, then we're not gonna get to see it because, uh, Focus Blast take that thing down. No problem, especially with the Life Orb boost. He's got an Electrovire now, uh, which probably would have been better to save. I probably would have sent out a Water type to try and lure a Thunderbolt. But, uh, he just sends it out, Focus Blast comes, and I'll probably be able to make one more hit with my Life Orb before I end up going down. Finally, he's got a Steelix, which is gonna be weak against my Focus Blast because of the Steel typing. So, uh, most fortunate for me, I'm able to sweep half of his team with Thunderous. That's really, really nice, and, uh, I think Chandelure did take a little bit of damage, but we're still in pretty good shape. Half his team is gone, and I've got five pokes left. So, I send the Chandelure out now, just in case he sends out the Rotom Frost. Instead, he sends out the Alola form of Executor, which has, uh, a Dragon typing, Grass and Dragon. Which I think is really, really interesting. Um, it's a good thing because it gives him immunity, or not immunity, but a neutral hit from Fire Blast. And so he's able to eat his Citrus Berry and come back to KO my Chandelure. Really a difficult Pokemon to deal with. I don't have any Ice moves, so I'm going to switch into my Rapidash now. Lots and lots of fire on this team. And uh, I hit it with a Flare Blitz, not quite enough to take it down. And he ends up eating a, another Citrus Berry. This Harvest Executor is uh, quite a dooming set as far as longevity goes. So, nice try, Rapidash. That's okay. I'll send in my Audino now, which also has Fire Blast, and uh, hopefully I'll be able to take this thing down with relative ease. Uh, but yeah, I've lost most of my team now, too. I do have the Dazzling Gleam. I probably should have saved the Rapidash for later, but uh, hindsight's always 2020. Oh well, it be what it be. So, Rotom Frost is now back out here. He gets a crit on that Thunderbolt, which really, really hurts. And, um, there's the Fire Blast. Went for Dazzling Gleam, um, on the Executor because Fairy is super effective against Dragons. And, um, yeah. Now I'll, I'll hit this thing with a Fire Blast. KO the shit out of it, although I did eat a couple of Thunderbolts, and that hurts. Mega Evolved Audino can, can take some punishment, but, um, yeah. Rotom is definitely a scary Pokemon to be up against. He reveals his last Pokemon to be a Kyurem. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not able to get the Dazzling Gleam off. That's fine. I'll just use my Audino as Switch Fodder as it goes down to an Ice Beam. And now I have a Wigglytuff, which uh, I believe also got a Fairy Typing. So, very, very special. And uh, it takes a good amount from uh, the Ice Beam. Wigglytuff's defenses are really paper thin. The only thing she has going for it for her is a lot of HP. So I go for Hyper Voice trying to take this thing down or at least leave a dent before Wigglytuff goes down. And yeah, another Ice Beam is definitely gonna hurt. Um, I got him to half health with the Hyper Voices, but yeah, he's gonna be at 60% with my last Pokemon. Oh shit! He has Roost. That is not good at all. <laughs> so I'll keep trying to Hyper Voice and uh, get this thing finished off, but yeah, with Roost I'm a little bit worried. My last Pokemon is a Metacham, so I should be able to, uh, to high jump kick this thing into the ground. Although I'm not sure if I can from, uh, 80% HP. Almost 90% HP, so it's gonna be a close one, but that's just how Dayton likes it. Here's my Metacham, we'll see what it do. Ooh, big outrage, takes me down pretty far, but the high jump kick is enough to kill it. <laughs> so another fantastic battle, thank you so much Tej Hen. And, uh, I hope to see you guys in the next fight. See you there. Alrighty, fight number two. We are up against Lennox Orange, who has sent out a Raichu. I've got my Mega Evolving Hound Doom out here. 
so I'm gonna go ahead and Mega Evolve, smash this thing with a Fire Blast. I think Raichu also got an Alola form, which is uh, Psychic and Electric, which is pretty cool, but uh, he doesn't have the Psychic type typing, so there's no point in going for my Dark, dark Pulse. Luckily, I do get the uh, burn as he encores me into the Fire Blast. Really uh, an interesting choice. I see the Thunderbolt coming now, so I switch into Swampert, and he actually goes for Hidden Power, which hits neutrally. I guess it's Hidden Power Ground or something like that, since he was using it against the Hound Doom. But uh, I don't think it's going to matter too much. He uses Encore on me now. I'm going to set up some Stealth Rocks. And then I will switch out again because I really don't want him to Encore me into Stealth Rocks. And I don't think that he's going to see that coming. Although I, I would because, uh, yeah, you revealed Encore. So now I know you have it. Why would I stay in? So let's see what he does. He goes for the Hidden Power, makes a smart play. Uh, the Raichu is just... Uh, slowly dying to burn, so I'm gonna go ahead and take the opportunity to sh set up the Shell Smash with my Crustle, uh, but he hits me with a Thunderbolt and paralyzes me, which is really fucking unfortunate, because uh, with double speed, Crustle can actually uh, outspeed a lot of stuff, but paralyzed, he's not gonna be able to do much at all. So the Raichu goes down to the burn, I do have a Shell Smash up, but um, yeah. It's probably not going to be pretty as he sends out the Shaman Sky form. And uh, he's got the Hidden Power on that as well. I was expecting a Seed Flare. Hidden Power hits neutrally. Uh, doesn't KO me, but I'm not able to fucking smash this thing because the Para Hacks kicks in. Yes, always with the Hacks, damn it. So, Crustle goes down to that mysterious Hidden Power. I don't know what it is. Um, but now we're going to send in the Tyranitar. This is another mixed Tyranitar, which I really like to see these things. Tyranitar has a really good offense and special defense. He sends in a Maractus, which is a mistake, because I was actually going for the Ice Beam on the Shaman. Um, but yeah, both of them are Grass types, so both of them are weak to the Ice Beam. That's going to be just fine. He hits me with the Giga Drain, but it's not going to be enough to save him from the second Ice Beam. So goodbye, Maractus. I really don't see Maractus on that many teams. It is in the uh, PU tier. I would like to be able to work it into some stuff, but it's, yeah, its stats are just so low that it's really hard to justify it. Shaman goes now for a Seed Flare, which misses, fortunately, and uh, I'm able to hit that thing with an Ice Beam. I think Tyranitar with an Assault Vest would be able to live through the Seed Flare. Tyranitar's Assault Vest plus the Sandstorm, which increases its special defense even further, is really, really dooming combo. Um, he's got the Toxic Rogue out here now, which I'm kind of scared of, but uh, I go for the Fire Blast just to see if it has dry skin, which, judging from that damage, even with the critical hit, I think that it does, but he is sword stanced up now, so uh, I'm going to go down to his Drain Punch, which is really, really unfortunate. But um, I do have that Swampert in reserve, so I'm going to be able to switch into that now. And although I won't get the special defense boost from the Sandstorm, it doesn't really matter. Swampert's natural bulk is really, really quite good. And uh, Toxicroak goes for Sucker Punch instead of Drain Punch, which is interesting. Because I think that uh, Toxicroak is faster than Swampert. Uh, he might have been able to live the Earthquake, maybe. I, I really like a bulk up Toxicroak more than the uh, Swords Dancing Super Offense one. Because then you can definitely live through an Earthquake. He reveals that he has a Ladian on his team, which is uh, kind of laughable. It's not a great Pokemon for many things. It can set up screens and things like that. Um, but yeah, it's much more of a utility Pokemon as he shows off by going for the Toxic. And then he's going to go for Roost to try and stall me out. Um, I'm just going to fire off some Scalds, hopefully maybe get the burn. Even with the uh, damage drop on burn to 6%, it basically negates leftovers healing, which I find to be a really, really helpful thing. So I just uh, keep on going for it. He encores me in the skull, which is just fine, because that's what I was going to do anyways. And uh, yeah, we're not getting the burn, it seems. I'm kind of just waiting to uh, fodder this Swampert out, because Lydian, mm, it's not really so much of a threat, you know? I've got a good amount of Pokemon left on my team, so I don't see the problem with foddering Swampert and getting a free switch into something that can deal with this lady in a bit more efficiently. So, uh, Swampert's almost dead. That toxic damage is really, really racking up. And yeah, he's just roost stalling. I wonder what his other two moves are. Probably, I would give him U-turn, or maybe reflect and light screen. 
But if it's Reflect and re Light Screen, I would have set those up a long time ago. Doesn't really matter. Swampert's down now. And uh, I'm gonna switch in my Arcanine now. I had the uh, Hound Doom, but I really want Arcanine to, uh, to come get some of this. <laughs> He's one of my favorite Gen 1 Pokemon. Total bro, absolutely. And um, yeah, super glad to have him on my team. The Arbok comes in now and gets the Intimidate, but that's relatively fine. I'm gonna switch into the Genesect, finish that thing off, not a problem at all. Um, because he can't really hit me with anything. No same type attack bonus, even that Earthquake doing very, very little. So uh, a couple of Iron Heads should finish this thing off. And that's been our second uh, random Gen 7 battle. I do hope that you've enjoyed it, friends. I've been Brandon Dayton, your humble narrator. Please don't forget to like, comment, and or subscribe if you did enjoy. And if you do, friends, I'll send you some uh, freeze-dried Taster's Choice coffee. It's pretty good, uh, $5.99 value, but only if you buy it wholesale or something like that. <laughs> Anyways, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one, guys. And until then, bye-bye! One, two, three, four... Goodbye, goodbye, see you again Goodbye, goodbye, see you, my friends